This conference will now be recorded. It's 4.30, let's go ahead and start the general, the Roswell General Service Committee um, for January 26th. Um, we have a roll call. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Foster, uh, Councillor Moore, Councillor Pessa. Here. Mr. Best. Here. Mr. Chair, you have a quorum. All right. Um, can I have a motion for approval of the agenda? I'd like to make a motion for the approval of the agenda um, for January 26, 2020. Approval of the minutes for September 22nd, 2021. Can it be 2022 though? No, Instead because. 2020. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. So January 2022 to and September 2021. Yeah, okay. I don't want to live 2020 over. Again. Okay, I thought I. Okay, good. we're good. I got a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. It passes. All right. So we have one action item. Consider approval of funding of the for the rocket for seventy-five thousand. Um, Brooks. So, Chair and Councilors, uh, thanks for listening to us today. So, as some of you are aware, there was an earlier proposal, I believe, dating back to 2019. Excuse me, Mr. Yes. Chair. Um, yes. Please make note, Councilor Moore has arrived. All right. Good to have you, Ms. Moore. Sorry. No problem. So, there was an early proposal, I believe it was in 2019, for this rocket sculpture. Um, but at the time, it was realized that there wasn't enough money that ended up being um, uh, accepted for the project. So it was around 30000 I think, is what the proposal was at the time. Um, and also that there was some counselors who wanted uh, a different sort of process to select the artist for the rocket sculpture. Ultimately, we ended up doing an RFQ in early 2020. How do I move forward with the mouse? Um, that side, sorry. Okay. Thank you. And so the intent of the project uh, with the RFQ was to, one, repurpose this um, decommissioned playground equipment that was shaped like a rocket. I'm sure many of you are familiar with it, it was up at um, the Spring River Zoo Park. And um, being that it was a unique piece from the 1960s, used for decades, uh, there was a real love. <laughs> so the idea was to do something um, to keep the kind of energy alive, to reuse it, and um, to place it somewhere in Roswell as a public art piece. Uh, and in that sense, because it's shaped as a rocket and knowing Roswell's history <laughs> with both um, with uh, Goddard as well as um, our UFO Roswell incident, uh, we wanted something that had kind of a little bit of a, captured the spirit of Roswell in that sense of space. Um, and so we also wanted to Look at this as a potential um, beginning for a possible public art program that you know down the road but at least um, this would be a great addition as an outdoor art piece for roswell so with the rfq we um, received some proposals went through a committee process and ended up choosing artists okay there we go artist josh berry who is here today hi everybody Right over here, and I'm going to switch chairs with you. Actually, you want to switch chairs? I just want you to come over here. So, uh, <clears throat> we really loved his proposal, and the committee, though, at the time, um, he had provided some drawing. Yeah. So he provided drawings, and the committee at the time loved the drawings, but um, they thought it might be better if we actually had a maquette, so a model that was made. So as you know, we hit- Which I didn't know what that word meant at the time. Oh, I know. <laughs> it's a model. Uh, and so at the time it was March, 2020, we hit COVID, project was put on hold. Uh, so Joe and I revisited it last year, spoke to Josh, and again, he offered to go ahead and complete the model for us. So um, now that we have a better idea of the cost of the project and what it could potentially look like, we wanted to bring the proposal back again to city council. So uh, we're estimating the overall cost from uh, creating the, um, the rocket sculpture to its installation, including lighting, signage, at 75000 So I wanted to give the floor to Josh for a moment just to be able to explain a little bit of his process and thinking behind um, the overall sculpture and then creating the model here. 
Uh, process and thinking was I'm sentimental and I love that thing and I want it to stay around forever. Uh, so originally I was approached about it, um, like we said quite a while ago, and um, I was in immediately, uh, but it was to do this, which was to turn it into a sculpture or uh, something to draw attention for tourists or people here that have memories of it or any of that stuff. So. Uh, this is what I came up with, and it doesn't light up, but the real one will do quite a bit of, and, and this is a scale model, so not everything will be exact, of course, but this is just kind of a good idea of what it will look like for a visual for you guys, but um, we're just going to take all the rust out, all the scary stuff, all the pokey stuff, all the tetanus stuff, all the stuff that we don't want anybody um, touching, even though nobody will be touching it anyway. Uh, take it out, and the original vision in the drawing was to kind of have it antique but we're going to do away with that, and we're going to do it kind of brand new style. Uh, but what we are doing that's different is the stairs are going to be in it. I'm just going to leave those in for sentimentality reasons because I like them. Um, but what will happen is it'll be lit from the inside on all three levels, and then we'll have some sort of, and I'll have to develop that later, some sort of lighting system up the center of it. Uh, and it'll all be LEDs, like multicolored stuff. So you can like program it, do all kinds of crazy stuff with it. And we want it to just blow people's minds, really, when they walk up and see it. So, and then it'll have exterior lighting as well on the outside, just to kind of light up um, the exterior of it as well. Um, and the paint's not going to be exact, but you know, I kind of wanted to keep the old theme of the red and blue paint and kind of keep it as close to the original as I could while still kind of modernizing it and giving it a cool twist. So, I mean, I went to Goddard, I was a rocket, so this thing is, you know. But that's kind of the idea with it. It'll have a little sign next to it that we're gonna build um, to kind of explain what it is, and it will be kind of in the same manner as the rocket. It will kind of look like it's same colors and stuff. Uh, it will show where it originally came to direct people. Angela, you with us? Yes. Okay. We can hear you. And Josh, I, I was just gonna, I was just gonna say no to whatever it was because he said he was went to Goddard, so I was just gonna say no, 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 just kidding. <laughs> I knew that could go one of two ways. So. And, and your proposal is to keep a lot of the original um, playground piece of equipment, that, yeah. that rocket, but you're going to elevate the height. The only thing that's really going to change major is we will move it up. This is kind of to show where the old wings were, uh, and we're going to put extensions on them and extend it up probably three feet. So the total overall height of the whole thing is going to be anywhere from 29 to 30 feet, so it's going to be pretty big. Uh, but that gives us enough room to build this engine, which it didn't have before, uh, and that's going to light up and do cool stuff too. So that gives us enough room for that and to set it off the ground, and we're still going to use that same not that it matters, but the same pull through the center uh, to mount it onto the concrete as well. So that's really all that's going to alter um, the profile of it is it's just going to be a little bit taller and the wings will be bigger and it'll have a, an engine in it now. So it's kind of, and the door will be closed up. Closed. Or the, <laughs> and we are going to make it to where it's not really, it would be nice to be a photo op for people. That's kind of the idea behind the whole thing is just, you know, we're Roswell and Goddard and Rockets. And so it's very themed, um, but we want people to not crawl on it and touch it and do anything like that that's going to endanger anybody. So we'll probably end up putting a small fence around it or something that'll deter people from wanting to crawl all over the thing. That's what so that's kind of the plan for it. Um, just kind of a little monument and uh, something that captures people's sentimentality and I know when Kevin walked in it was perfect because you you did it for me you walked in and got all excited because you had one where you grew up and, <laughs> and you didn't even know what this thing was but it reminded you of the uh, slide so you know, when I walked in it was instantly recognizable uh, as what it was and what it's being repurposed and uh, and you're absolutely correct not only does it put together all of our uh, Jules Verne and and Disney-esque fantasies and rocket yeah. ships to the moon but that those all good feelings of uh, playground equipment that is uh, no longer appropriate, I guess, for use, thanks to all of our uh, <laughs> uh, new, uh, recreation laws. 
but I, I love it. I just think it's great. I, I mm -hmm. love to see this thing going somewhere in a high visibility area around town. That okay, was the question. Oh, go for it. Okay, Ms. Moore. So, so we're spending this seven times. So we're not actually replacing. I thought the initial idea was to replace your rocket to have a usable play thing. So now this is just seventy-five thousand for a sculpture to sit somewhere pretty, along with the other sculptures that sit in somewhere pretty. And did I? I I think I think I must have misunderstood where we we've, we've already replaced that. We've already replaced it. There is a rocket slide that's in the where it was in the location where it was. That oh, that's right. I remember. I went to the the thing. <clears throat> oh, so and let's let's be fair one. about where the placement of this is going to be. Now we know it's a rocket, and we know this is Rosal. So let's not continue to say we should be putting this all, you know, at the Goddard School or whatever. So let's be fair and <laughs> thinking about the placement as when we begin to think about. Uh, I get visibility, I get all those things, but I think let's be careful of one. So there's not a thing that says, you know, cause that's what, you know, that's what was gonna be heard. Y'all know all y'all in there are probably not thinking what, what the, this is what's gonna be said. Well, that's a God of rocket, so it's over there about, you know, so let's, I just think as we begin to think of places, just be careful of, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> we cannot put a rod, we cannot put it at Rosa High because they, <laughs> You see that little engine down there? They put a nut something in and blow it up to the, you know, so. <laughs> so well, but I, and I'm just saying, be fair, as we begin to think about placement, I know this is just getting started. I love the markup that was on the side. This is so much, much more beautiful than than the previous one, but I, I really love the way it looks. Um, the, the little one that you had on the side. I'm trying to think the height. Man, I can't even think that high, I guess. Um, and and it's going to light and we'd be able to use it for did you say miss that we'd be able to put a sign like words or something so it could also be used as you know signs or whatever well there'll be one next to it that kind of explains what it is and where it came from and the history of it and directs people over to the zoo but uh, it's not going to be it won't light up and you can't change the message on it or anything it'll just be to to explain what it what it is to people some sort of plaque some sort of plaque or something along those lines. And to be fair, to split the difference between Goddard and Roswell High, the name of this tentatively is the Roswell Rocket, Angela. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I get that, I'm just saying, and then when it was red and it's blue, so I, that, that kept, you know, that'll keep some things down. So, you know, I'm just, you know, cause I, you know, I live on the South side, I went to Roswell High, so I'm trying to be fair enough. But I really love it. I really love the makeup of it. It's, it looks amazing. Um, Thank you. But I really wish that there could be, we could use it, some part of it for signage that says, you know, what's coming on at the zoo the next time somewhere. Maybe they have something place that we could add something to, to add a, a rolling sign to it or something to make it more than just something that stands there and looks cute. Maybe at a later, maybe if there's some place to add on later on that we could add or something, you know what I mean? So that it'd be valuable as a upcoming events at the zoo or wherever it's going to be, you know, whatever's coming up from, you know, have one of those signs. I just think that would be cool to have a double duty for it later on down the line. If we, I know not right now, but maybe, you know, later on, add a sign to it, light switch sign. Mm -hmm. I'm done. I'm sorry. I'm just talking. Right, no problem. <laughs> hey, I have, I have two questions. Are your lights going to be solar and are they going to be brighter than the ones that we have on either end of the town because sometimes those aren't bright enough for me. I have very bad eyesight, so when I drive into town, I'm not seeing them. Like, and because that will depend on where we put it right. in my mind. And I think you could do your solar thing, you have it high enough like we had when I had them at the water troughs and stuff at the ranch. You can use it as something for people to stand under yeah. while they read your plaque. So right. incorporate solar roof and then plaque underneath it so they can have a little bit of shade to to look at that and then my next question remind me exactly where all this 75 is coming from because i'm i'm general so i've got i've got 30,000 back here on this this sheet where's the rest of it coming from well, initially, when we were when we were talking about trying to uh, do this, we we talked about Lodger's Tax trying to use Lodger's Tax for it. This does not meet the the conditions mm -hmm. of use of Lodger's Tax. 
so as we reinvented that we as we went through going all right what's the true cost of this thing what is the total cost of it we we now discovered it's seventy five thousand. this will come out of the gross receipts tax that we have generated over this year so, and the 75 includes installed wherever we want it i was installed signage and everything else we believe that it'll, it, it should take care of everything outside of something unknown that we weren't prepared for and it'll cover that and that's with the pad underneath it being spec to the weight of it um, by a contractor, oh. and that's that's. Spec How tall is this again? It's 26 to 30 without the spire on top, so it's even taller than that. Was. Okay, so you're going to have to go down at least uh, probably 10, 15 foot straight down to hold your pole down far enough to hold the other up with the weight. Yeah. The center pole is going to be the very, really the killer. deep, and then there's four pads on each wing that's going to also attach. Okay, so what's underneath the pad is, obviously, it's not going to be wood, obviously. Right. So is it is it gravel? Is it? It just depends on where it goes. We don't know. I don't know what location it's at right now, and that's to be determined. So We, we anticipate some type of concrete footing underneath each one of those four corners. Oh, yeah. yeah. And are we going to have fencing around it to keep people away from it and stick mm -hmm. our stickers on it like we have all the others? Well, well, we are trying to do, and again, yeah, we, we want everybody to enjoy it, but we don't want everybody climbing up on it and everything else. So it, we, we anticipate that this will be a photo op opportunity. And uh, so as we were, and, and I, I have a, about three, three sites that I can share with you of what we're looking at right now, because, you know, we had talked at one time about putting it out at the zoo, uh, having it re remember where its history came from. We talked about a lot of different locations for it. What we wanted to make sure of, because of uh, this being that value added, we wanted it in a pedestrian friendly location. So that generally means downtown area somewhere. And uh, again, our, again, our downtown, anything from Hondo to Spring River, Virginia to Richardson are those areas that we were looking at. So we have a, we have some tentative places. So I, I want to be very careful about uh, using any kind of, kind of chain link fencing around this or anything. It's got to be, it's got to be indicative of what this art piece is, and then we want it to survive forever. So um, as far as how to do that. I think because it's going to have electricity, we might just electrify it. And anybody that touches it, <laughs> smart move. You're welcome. Love that. I know ranching ranchers would like that. Yeah, I, can, I can bring my electric fences for the car. <laughs> I'll set no, so the idea is to try to find some way to uh, protect it, but keep it still accessible to a point so that it can be enjoyed. And aesthetically, I'm going to try to figure out some sort of system for the fences that doesn't just look like an ugly. Is it going to be powder coated to keep it from rusting? No, it's going to be painted. The main part of it's going to be a special stainless steel paint that's actual stainless steel and it lasts a really long time. So. What's your really long time? 30 10, years? 10 to 12. Okay. Um, is what they say. Because so. our posts don't last that long when we paint them. So, okay. Yeah. Well, and I could also see it even on a, raised on a pad just yeah. enough to that, that gets it a little bit out of touch and then just yeah. enough fencing so that it's not in a the fencing wouldn't be in the picture. People could be up close to it. Yeah. Similar, similar to what we have with the Chisholm statue. Right. Yeah, he had here. brought that up last time. It's elevated a little bit. Elevated. Of course, then that brings it from yeah, brings it taller, but still it. It, mm -hmm. We'll put a red light on it so the airplane don't hit it. There you go. And I actually really do like that idea because it would also give an ability to see more detail in the engine yeah. and the underside of it and all that. So that might be a good idea for that. And to answer your solar question, I hadn't even thought of it really. We were just going to power it underground, but that's good and I'll look into it. Well, I'd contact XL and see if they want to collaborate with you and yeah. save you part of this 75000 yeah, we are building is solar powered and we work with Excel quite a bit on that kind of stuff. So. And let them let them donate X amount for your solar panel and all that and start collaborating with people. I like that. Just saying. That's a nice idea. My only problem I have with it is the other problems we've had with solar or solar lighting that we've had. So, I mean, it's we'll going to be We'll give Excel the be contract LA. where they got to keep it going. <laughs> If it's LED, it's not going to be using that much light. Yeah, it's all LED. It's all so, low power draw. But you can still get XL to sponsor. Just saying. <laughs> They're electricity. Well, definitely talks about it. So. CBE, you know, any Central Valley Electric, any of those. Yeah. Just saying. I'm done. That's a good idea. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair.
You know, I have been opposed to this since the very beginning. And one of the reasons is the money. The, the money is going to cost to uh, to bring this thing to fruition. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't really know whether this piece of art will be significant or important to visitors. This is more significant to individuals that live here in Roswell. I mean, we, I, as a, as a parent, as a grandparent and whatever, can actually go tell the kids what this really stands for. And, and a lot of them have gone through, they slid through the, the, the actual one. And I'm afraid that this piece of art is, is uh, I mean, to me, it's expensive. It's, I mean, there's no, no way around it. I feel it's expensive. But I, I think we go back to the same thing that happened with the uh, Civic Center. A lot of people don't know that the Civic Center <laughs> is built around the Coca-Cola company where, where the old Coca-Cola building used to be. So the center of it is the Coca-Cola. But that's not what attracts the people to, to Roswell. When, when we heard about this, it was, it was to try and attract tourism to, to Roswell for, for people when, when they come. And like I said, to me, tourists are not gonna come because of the rocket. They're going to come because of the UFO and whatever else. And at that time, it was discussed that it was only going to cost us thirty thousand dollars. So now it goes up to seventy-five. And on top of that, we now charge for the zoo. And to me, I rather use seventy-five thousand dollars. To open up the zoo for the public, so they don't have to pay, especially the the ones that can't pay. And so I I I mean even though it's a it's a great piece of art and what have you, but I I don't support the fact that uh, it's costing us so much money when that money can be used for something else. This is more a a luxury type of item than a necessity. I, I don't see this as a necessity that the city absolutely has to have in order to to try and attract uh, the tourists. You know, I, I don't know. Uh, I I just don't. I, I'll stop it. I'll stop right there. I, I just don't support it. Well, and you made some good points. Um, if we were at a point where our budget was really tight, I'd I'd be a hundred percent with you. Um, but you also, your other points were exactly right too. This isn't something that to attract people. The, um, I think this is to the heart of all the people that grew up in Roswell and, and wrote and went down that slide, and we're and we're paying homage to the fact that that this is a part of our history. I like the idea of turning it into a monument because we can't use it as a slide anymore anyway because all the other reasons why we had to pull it out of the park. Um, but it, it does, it can add to the aesthetics of Roswell and it still fits the other portion of our, of our tourist area. And so it hits, it hits all that. And, um, and right now, if, if we were at a point where our GRT wasn't coming in, we didn't have, and everything was as tight as everything is, then yes, I, I would agree with you. Um, your point of the park are paying for, for enter, entrance into the zoo. Um, you know, by all means, you can make a motion and, and put it in place where we, we put a scholarship fund to allow a $75,000 scholarship fund for people to, to pay for some people, for Roswell people to go to the zoo. Um, but we also have it set up. We have free days. We we the and when we go back and we can look at our report of all the out of town visitors that are paying for the zoo, 
that our taxes aren't paying for, that, that, that we're bringing in money from other other areas. So um, I, I for the longest time thought paying for the, the uh, uh, paying for the, the well, paying to go to the zoo, paying to go to the museum, because I, I was proud that we had a free museum and a free zoo. But I also am proud of the fact now of what we're being able to do at the museum and what we're being able to do at the zoo because we're, we are funding it better. And um, the point that was brought to me was, you know, if it was free, it's not worth going to see. Well, now it's, it's, it's but the museum is, museum has always been great to go see, but now we're, we're having more funds put there that we can do more things with. It. And um, I think that, that, that goes back to this, this paying homage to, uh, to all the Roswell people who have gone down that slide. Okay, so, so my comment is, Kevin, you said you were on a slide similar to this, or oh, on this. Those, is, you know, those, uh, there's one in Carlsbad, there's one, they're all over. They're ubiquitous, they're nationwide. Yeah, nationwide. so it could be mm -hmm. anybody coming to Roswell that their memory is jogged by this. Personally, when I first started this, kind of like you, I'm like, what a waste of money. I thought the Longhorn needed a scratch and post. I thought that was hilarious. You know, I, I'm thinking Longhorn he's not there anymore. Too. So yes. they so sent him on. That problem, yeah, it cancels that problem right there. <laughs> and I agree with the art museum and it, and it getting bigger and better. But if I remember right, we have an art trail, don't we? In between Anderson Museum and ours and it's been proposed and talked about a number of times. Okay. Officially, it's not set up, but we do try to partner together to cross market. Okay, so let's find a place where it'll fit into that art trail. I mean, because you've got Anderson Museum over here, you have Roswell Museum here, you have UFO, so you've got a triangle at this point. So what would be wrong with sticking it somewhere where it kind of goes, and art is not cheap. I do art. It is not, I don't even care if you recycle stuff. It is not cheap. Mm -hmm. And the hours that you put in, you're going to pay for the hours that you put in on this. You're a crane to get it up, welding it, your rods. It's going to be worth that whole 75. That's why I suggested LED lights. <coughs> you don't have to dig a hole underground and hire an electrician. Yeah. Because that's going to cost you yeah, like. It is probably 30,000 just for electricity in a certain area where you put it to go underneath sidewalks and everything else. So I'm just saying, um, there's gonna be your your cost right there in your thing. I, I think it's great now that the Longhorn is gone and we don't need a scratching post or whatever. Um, I used to go up and down that slide too, I hate to say it, but I think we can get it done and I, I just think that it has more memories than just Goddard Rocket, than just Roswell, than just Goddard High School, whatever, or just Peppermint Park. <laughs> you know, maybe we could do the cross candy canes as we go in through a gate to get to it. I'm sure they're around here somewhere. They can be redone. And you've got Peppermint Park. I tried to park. figure out a way to integrate Peppermint Park into mm -hmm. just in order. It doesn't that's what work. I want to do, because yeah. that's what it is to me. Mm -hmm. But and I mean, you've got the carousel out there too. So let's just put the carousel horses around it too. And you've got a hell of a piece, you know? <laughs> so anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm for it. Um, I hope it doesn't go more than 75,000, like 200,000. Let's kind of try to stop right where we're at and see what we can do. Yeah. <laughs> but really what you said is the only variable right now for me personally was the electricity in it. And well, and your cement, your cement's yeah. got a price. It's going to go up and down. And what, what metal you've got left, I assume, yeah. is still not rested and you can file it down. And Well, and that's the other thing is I haven't, Jim took me out there two years ago, but I haven't seen it since. So I don't know what condition it's in right now after being on the ground out there. So that has to be seen as well. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, in to speak to some of your concerns. Um, I totally hear you on it. And I, my initial was to be something for Roswell people to have their memories from. But the more I started researching this thing, there's websites built for these things. There's whole groups around the United States. People go crazy. You can put on a geode hunt. I mean, and, and like you said, it was perfect when he, he's not from here and he has the same reaction to it. So for me, it wasn't ever supposed to be 
the draw for people to come down. It's just supposed to maybe enhance the draw when people come down for the UFO festival. For me, a 40 foot lit up rocket tower would enhance that festival for me. So, and then the reason that the price went up so steeply is everything for me has doubled, steel mm -hmm. has doubled, everything has doubled at least, if not tripled. So that's why that changed so much. I could think, I think it'd be a good part of our advertising too, to go with the planetarium. Again, in the art trail. So if if indeed, uh, and I know it's going to be, I know it's going to pass. I mean, there's no doubt about it. It's going to pass, regardless of my objection to it. <laughs> I want to see how it's but made. the thing is, <laughs> if if it does go over seventy five thousand dollars, are we going to be amenable to? whatever price it is. And, yeah, and I'll address a little bit of that as well too. And in defense of our artist here, um, the 30,000 that we initially decided upon did not take into account the installation of the art piece before. It was going to cost more and that was my argument with, uh, or, or my debate with a couple city councilors as well too, is that it did not cover the full cost of installation at that point in time. However, it was approved by the city council that we would install this as a piece of art for $30,000 if we could try and figure out where the location was. Go through COVID, go through everything. Uh, it got stuck in the muck in order to get there. And so we bring it back. And this gave, I think the delay gave us an opportunity to say time out for a second. Let's, let's rebuild this thing. Make sure you get the, the true picture of what the cost of this really is. Uh, because I think that at the time before, I think staff was thinking that they would go over and do some of the work themselves and just kind of do it that way. When you, when you talk about whether or not it'll go over the 75 or not, I will say that uh, with any one of our projects, once we set that number, the, um, the variable that we attach to that is that if there is a 10% differential on that number, so if we, if we say we're gonna do a million dollars worth of streets, but we find that the million dollars doesn't cover to the level, we do a 10% differential. So if we go 75 plus 10% differential, if that was to truly happen, then we would go ahead and move forward. If we, find, if we discover that more money than that needs to be, needs to be done, it comes back, and that is that's the intent. Um, you know, the nice thing is, I think our, our GRT is 27% up from what what last year was for this month alone. So um, I think we're going to be okay. But it's really the process. In our conversations, as we established uh, this relationship through the RFP process, we believe 75 should more than cover that uh, that work. I believe we built in a contingency within that 75 as well too. So we think we're covered. Unless we have to, unless something, um, some variable that we're not aware of. So, and but if those variables happen, uh, you know, something over the 10% rule over the price of the project, it'll come back to the city council for that. Um, I'm, you know, with the artist here and hearing this as well too, we will try to discover that long before sure. we get to the point sure. of, of needing the funding. So, and, and I think from my area and the funding wise, I'll reiterate that I think uh, it's pretty accurate in what I'm going to need for the actual build itself. And the only variable left is location, which is um, the foundation, the electricity run to it. And if it's massive because it's 100 feet from anything and you've got to run a huge line out there, then, um, then that's the only thing I think that could tip it over the top is just electrical run. But another good idea, so I'll check into that too. Well, and the other thing though that is is the condition it is. Yeah. So if, I, if, I, if, well. if we end up having to replace all the well. steel for, yeah. from it, you're yeah. you're you're yeah. going to run higher too. So that's um, that would be a variable. And if if it does pass, one of the first things I'll do it if Jim's cool with it is go out and and see what that's, this condition we're in and assess that again and see where we're at. And so if if the material out there is not in good condition, then you're gonna to have to replace it. Replace it, yeah. which means it's not really the <laughs> the actual slide. Well, I, I don't. It could I, be a replica, but not a not the not 
I'm not using the actual slide. I don't see where a hundred percent of it will be not usable. I'm, I'm, but, but I, you know, but there are going to be there's some there's rest. There's, there's going to be some. Yeah. Other than that, I'm going to try to. My whole point is to maintain as much of the integrity as the original thing as possible. Yeah, you can fill the holes in and grind it down. Yeah, exactly. So, and I have to go back to the first one I ever went down was actually my where I, the town I was born in in Dumas, Texas, and it, it had exactly the same slide. There you go. So, and it burned the back of your leg off just like this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, any more discussion? I'm done. It's more. Oh, we got you muted. She's on. Are you muted on your own? Okay. Okay. Cool. I need to make a motion. Yep. I'm open for a motion. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to consider the approval of funding in the amount of $75,000 in support of the public artwork design to look like the rocket to be created by artist Josh Berry utilizing a decommissioned piece of playground rocket equipment originally in use at the Spring River Zoo, aka Peppermint Park. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I don't know I'll, if I'll you can hear it, Angela. He's I'll go ahead and second it. Okay. So all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Aye. So we need to. Jeez. Um, Councillor Moore. Oh. Oh. Can you hear us? See if she can text yes or no to you. She's trying to yeah, she's trying to talk. <laughs> I guess I didn't. Mm -hmm. It's showing that she's not muted. Speakers on on our unit. Yeah. So I treat the uh, filters down at the bottom. This one. Mm -hmm. I have to close the slideshow. Yeah. Oh, she did. She did. She, she did. Uh huh. Yeah. It's not working. You just right click on the slideshow and see if it'll give you the uh, end show. And now go down to the bottom, make sure our speaker's on. It's on. Yeah. All right. Okay. Here, let me. Let's call her. <laughs> I know, but we couldn't hear if you, the, your vote, if it was a yay or nay. Yes. Your yes? Okay. That's what we yeah. wanted to make sure. I said second, but nothing, I don't know. Nothing here. Yeah, we couldn't hear you. Okay, so we'll put you down as the second and, and, and yes. All right. Okay, cool. And uh, yeah, I don't know why. It shows that you're not muted, but we can't hear. <laughs> yeah. Technology. Technology is great until it's not. So, all right. Well, we can hear. If you, we can leave it this on, if you don't mind, and that way we can. It's going really. See, I'm trying to move it. Oh, now we hear you. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, we can. <laughs> Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Great. Cool. Thanks. Oh, so. Signals next time.
Uh, all right. <laughs> all, so now we, uh, item three, not, or we're on to the non-action items, a presentation by the, for the zoo. We just wanted, we had several things that, that we've already voted on and approved, but I just wanted it at this level to, to hear. Yes. So, um, uh, Chairman Foster, members of the committee, um, Mr. Wright sends his apologies for not being here. He did have a medical emergency. Um, so I will be giving the presentation. Uh, this is an overview. It was requested to provide some information about the zoo. We reopened the zoo last January after being closed due to COVID. At that time, we re-evaluated how we were going to operate the zoo. And so we have one year of actual data tracking of visitation. 59% uh, of our daily visitors come from outside of Roswell. Um, as you can see on the chart, 29% um, are out of uh, New Mexico and then 30% are out of state visitors. We had a total of 14,268 total visitors from January. It says January 1 of 2021, but it's supposed to be January 12th. That was the date that we opened through December 31st of 2021. Um, a couple of things that we enhanced, obviously we added a guest services staff um, team to that zoo we've met we had never had one we had to implement food prep and handling training for concessions we added new things to concessions and then we also added merchandise um, here is a review of our revenues uh, for the past year um, Admissions is 57% of our revenue uh, for the year. Uh, one thing that the zoo is, it's on a 70-30 cost recovery model. While we did not quite need it, we do show that we are moving in a forward direction. We had 9% increase from the last budget year uh, with all of our revenue items. So you can see it's broken down. Admissions is 57%. We had merchandise coming in at 11.3% with $12,000. And then our next highest is our sponsorships. That's the other. That sponsorship amount um, came from community partners for our special events that we held out there. Particularly this line item was for Night of the Living Zoo. Um, you can also see that we've had um, rentals of our birthday party room, donations uh, for our big ALK exhibit. That was our end of the year giving in 2020. Uh, we just launched a campaign in December of 2021 for our butterfly garden and then obviously concessions. Um, and then you did have a total revenue of 110 there. Um, facility updates. So um, this past year we had our uh, volunteer day. We stained fences. We, uh, you know, painted OSPO pipes. We power washed sidewalks. It was a, a effort of the city of Roswell employees. We also had our opening of the cougar exhibit. We um, implemented our coyote and wolf gate uh, modifications in June. We um, did the river gate repair in July. And then of course we completed our longhorn shoot in September of 21. Other facility upgrades also included the elk uh, fencing that began in October, um, the fishing pond uh, completion and turnover in November, and there's one more, if I can move this, I can tell you what it is because I don't remember off the top of my head. I believe it was the bear um, exhibit, um, the, the rooftop. Um, we also repaired irrigation and water pipes um, due to the hard freeze that happened last February. Um, so that has been ongoing. Uh, additionally, other uh, upgrades. Um, included our education. So we did lose our education coordinator, which handled most of our programming. Uh, we implemented, um, you know, COVID protocols. Obviously, it was a challenge working with schools, so we weren't able to capitalize on that with having many schools come out for field trips. Um, we are reworking our education program because we just onboarded a new education coordinator this past January uh, to meet those future goals and the needs of the community. Um, the next slide, I'll click to it. It's going really slow. I have so much problem. Come on. There we go. 
Um, this was animal care. So this kind of just tells you our total number of species is 56. Um, total individual is 122. We acquired two new species, um, which includes the capybara. Um, we have three capybara and then our uh, zone-tailed hawk from Texas. Uh, it was a wildlife uh, rehabilitation. You can see it there on the right. We also um, implemented some professional development and training for our staff to assist them in what they do to care for our animals. You can see the pictures on the bottom. That's one of our lead zookeepers, Amy, um, doing the x-ray scan. You can't see it on this bottom part because of here, but you can see the x-ray of one of our animals. We implemented um, monthly assessments uh, for our animals, uh, documentation of that, and then of course, additional professional development for our zookeeper staff. Trying to click to the next slide. Let's see if it'll go. All right. Um, the next item is events. So this is um, just a year in review. We held our UFO Arts and Crafts Fair, Night of the Living Zoo, which was our big fundraiser, Race for the Zoo, and then um, we partnered and hosted the Roswell Christmas Railway. In the summer, we had our Zoofari Nights. You can see our big movie screen out here. Um, these are just pictures of some of our community partners that participated in Night of the Living Zoo. Um, Additionally, safety and security. So we had Palms and Associates come out and do a risk assessment last March. Uh, we inspected the facility. We had grounds crew working to correct some of those safety measures. Um, we also um, had our carousel go through a safety inspection um, and that was also passed. And then we also um, did a maintenance and equipment um, amount to cover those costs. And we will be implementing those each year in our new budget. Um, staffing and administration, obviously uh, in February, we kind of acquired the zoo under the public affairs umbrella. We added a new zoo director in June of 21. We also included a ground maintenance supervisor specific to the zoo um, that came from the parks division. And then we did add a new uh, fourth zookeeper with justification of the time and management of the number of animals. Uh, we have been doing staff development training um, not only for the zoo staff but also for guest service staff and then we sent our curator miss andrea cole she attended a professional conference uh, zaa in fort worth texas um, to establish a network of new colleagues to share um, best practices um, we also had a behavioral and enrichment manager, uh, Lynn Tupa and Tim Van Loan, that came from the Albuquerque Biopark. You can see our staff, they actually did some training with them on safety measures, uh, best practices for um, animal training with our mountain lion and, of course, some of our other critters. We also did a four hour conflict management training for guest services, how to interact with guests. And then our Zoo Global Academy um, is a new course that is related to um, zoo and wildlife stuff that we've implemented for all of our staff to enhance their um, skill set as well. And I will stand for any questions. One of the questions I, well, any, any questions? Well, let... my, my quick question is, the is it new mexico uh game and fish that come down and have a checklist for, for the animals in general and how they're taken care of and all that or is that a federal it's USDA. The usda usda okay and PETA. yes they all know that we're going to this extra effort and bringing our zoo up to code and all of that I will just say that it PETA has that. no regulatory responsibilities with the zoo. Mm -hmm. uh, the zoo is underneath USDA responsibility. We receive uh, the periodic inspections mm -hmm. that they're required to do, and we uh, we essentially take care of every one of them that comes through. So, so, so do they have a like the fire department? You know, they go through all this and they get an A, and same with the police department. Does zoo people have that? Um, that's part of the accreditation process that we are currently working towards. Okay, so we're working to like be the yeah. top of the top. Uh, along, along the U in our minds, USDA responsibilities and meeting those criteria are the minimum basics necessary. 
We are working on, I don't know if we're going to the uh, American Zoological Association yet for their accreditation, but we are going after accreditation to show our seriousness of how we're going to operate the zoo and the animals that are there. It's just it's a long haul for in order to bring this. Uh, bring this well, and it's back. been ignored so, for so long that it's so, time that we're taking those steps to get there. We believe, and I, I mean, I know uh, John Wright, uh, the entire team out there, believe in the accreditation well enough that they're kind of saying we want to get this done. So. Awesome! I like hearing that. Thank you. Um, and if I may ask, uh, Mr. Chair and members of the committee, um, Spring River Zoo will be hosting the state's uh, first group of zoo uh, brain power February 8th, I believe. Um, so we've invited all zoos from the state of New Mexico to come and share their best practices and um, how we can continue to enhance and improve the services that we provide to our community and to the visitors. Nice. Thank you. Ms. Moore, do you have any questions? No. No question. Uh, there she is. Um, the one that that we don't see here, and and I know the Friends of the Zoo are is a separate organization, but it would be one of those things too that. Um, how their membership's doing because one of the things that we said is we've we started charging for admission but if you're become a friend of the, the zoo you don't you have free admission to our zoo and so um, I, I didn't see it in our figures here but but I, I would like I mean, eventually to see how their membership's tracking sure and then we and we can do that the friends of the zoo are a very important part of our entire structure uh, just like the uh, the friends of the museum uh, all of these foundational arms there are sponsorship farms there are foundational arms they're the ones that are going to help us bring together uh, the funding the local funding sponsorship funding uh, in order to do everything so um, friends of the zoo at the same time we were doing our master planning they were shifting their model as well too. So, uh, so they have. A, I, I think they're they're more active now than they ever have been. And and um, um, may, one thing I did just want to add. So memberships for the zoo in March of 21, the friends uh, decided to transition that over responsibility over to the zoo for memberships to the zoo. Okay. The friends of the zoo are still a group of individuals that are very passionate about the zoo and anybody can be a part of that organization but they are no longer um, serving the membership portion where they come into the zoo um, as of december um, we had a sold a total of 129 memberships to the zoo from march of 21 through december we had a lot in march where we onboarded that were part of the friends organization and so this current year current march that's our goal is Every March, we re um, kind of renew everybody's membership. Uh, with that, it's under the guest service division. They will get their letter, they get an ID card. We partnered uh, with the recreation team for a program called Community Pass. So they can have one membership card for both of those facilities. It's in the barcode, they scan it, and then they come in. And so, nice. um, Again, just to, a little bit of clarification, but anybody could be part of the Friends of the Zoo and they are still uh, supporting Spring River Zoo. Because I, it's, it's one of those things that I've had lots of people who said, you know, we liked it when it was free. Well, and the same with the museum. I had an artist friend of mine who said, well, I went every Sunday and now I have to pay. And I said, well, you, you obviously think that the art's important. Aren't you a friend of the museum? Well, I haven't been. I said, well, you, you pay, at the time it was $40, and you get in free for the whole year. So, I mean, it's not like, you know, if you're you're an artist, you should be supporting art. And so, and so there again, that's, it's a way that, that locals can pay a one fee and, and, and get in for free. Mm -hmm. Can you clarify the membership again? Is it for the recreation center and the zoo, or is it for the art, recreation, and so the membership at the zoo, we had 129 total members. Okay. The um, software that we use to track membership to the zoo and to recreation is called Community Pass. It can be used for both. Okay, so you can buy a membership at the zoo and go over to the recreation center 
and enjoy their facilities. No, you buy a membership to their. It's one card. One card. One so card for card. both okay. memberships. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we do uh, one other thing. We have free days every first Saturday at the zoo is free, and then July 31st is our big community event day. Do we have packages in the near future for things uh, like, like the zoo and the museum and like a, a la carte? <clears throat> if you, I mean, if you have a, a, a barcode it's easy enough to say this person is a member of the museum and that's what the community pass program Correct. does so when you pull up your barcode if you come to their facility or our facility it's going to show all the memberships that you have throughout uh it's really just those two entities. just to show the memberships not a discount we we have a we have an intent we have a vision for a city pass that will get you into everything, everything within the city we haven't made it there yet because it's, it's step by step. Process. So it's a goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was thinking there might be a goal there somewhere like there that. There is a goal, and That's we cool. just have not reached that goal yet. Okay. Thank you. And the, there's different levels, except for the like the museum. There's different levels, and we have our national, our NIMBA, our. Oh, I'm forgetting too. Uh, is it NIMBA? Or no. <laughs> NIMBA. But that goes with everybody over the whole United States. Am I right? That's a United States museum thing. Yeah. Okay. Narm. 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 Thank you. I had to read it, but but it's oh yeah. you're important. And no, it's just the card that you get for that one. And so um, and he so that way he is. yeah. <laughs> and so uh, that but it could get to that point where in but but I think it it's a good goal. for the yeah it's a good goal. It's a good goal. One card, all interest, all entry, entry. Any other right. questions? No. Very good. All right, so I got to put yeah. this over to Miss Hall. Click on it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, here we go. Um, just wanted to give you a, a a quick presentation that uh, the adult center and it doesn't show up there. Is it on that side that the the hours are? Um, we have opened up. We're not just opened up on Wednesdays anymore. Yay! So we're excited about that. And now it's Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Right now we get a little more staff in, then we can open up back on a Saturday. Um, but that's what we have happening right now. So you can see the year to date attendance is extremely low, but just wanted to remind you that is, um, it was just for the Wednesdays for the last six months. So we're looking for that to increase. I mean, pretty much last year they would do thousand plus in a, you know, in a, in a month. You know, it, it it's it's staggering. So we, we want to get it back to that level. Um, we're very excited about this building. It is it is such a neat building. Um, and I will show you the floor plan here in just one second. There we go. It, it is a fantastic building for programming. It really is, and and our vision for this and is is to really program as much as we can different types of programming we're not sure yet what that looks like we're in the process of trying to uh just trying different things you know and i want to make it it i got here in november and it really is a building that has so much potential and so to see it open back up is is really neat and, and to see what we can do with it. And so I started looking back at the history and realized that we haven't really had a good year where both centers are open. So I'm, I'm very interested to see how they both do and what programming goes where, you know, and, and what's utilized at, at the uh, Recreation Aquatic Center and what do we do at this one? So that's gonna be really something that we're looking for. So I say this is a fantastic building, it is, but it needs a little attention. Um, there are some, some outdated areas that we're looking at on the uh, top right. That is room 27, which we are concentrating on right now. We are taking out, there is mold, remediation that we were uh, we are doing um, the lighting has all come down they have today that mold is gone so they were doing an air quality test when I left at uh, two o'clock so we're moving along on that building so that's that's really going to be cool what we're going to do with this building or this room 
is we're coming back and we're putting in some some flooring to make it more of the yoga room yoga pilates that type it'll it'll be um, used for programming that that kind of area that uh, kind of fitness area yeah and so we're we're moving it we're we're going now what we're doing then is we are we are really strategically planning. Okay, so after we finish this room, what is next? And so we're looking at that entryway, that one room that I just showed you that uh, we are looking to, we call it the hospitality room, um, where the fireplace was. It, it needs some attention because that's the first thing you see when you walk in. So now we start doing all the planning. Um, exactly what do we need to do to this, you know, to help this building along, how we can, uh, you know, just make it so inviting that that's a place you want to be there. We're looking at, we've got to really identify what this building is to everybody. Um, when you say adult center, what does that mean to you? Is that 18 and up? Is that 50 plus? You know, what we're, we're really going to try to establish an identity for this building that and, and talk to as many groups as we can. What do you want to see in this building? That type of thing. So it is, we're in that strategic planning phase right now to where we're looking at everything, you know, past numbers that we did, past programming that we did, that kind of thing. So what we're doing right now is in the meantime, um, we are working on the staffing because like I said, we would like to open up on, on Saturday as well. So we're working at, at trying to get it to a full staffing uh, level. Um, so you see like the movie night, we got to determine what goes with your, with your membership. Um, so when you walk in there, what are the things that you, that, that you can do um, that goes with your membership. What are you going to do? To, what are you going to pay for? What kind of programming you pay for? Um, example, the book club comes with your membership. Movie night, is that going with the membership? Or is it? it would be, so the movie night is intended to be a free program, but where concessions are sold. And that has to be more with movie licensing. And Yeah. Um, so this is Alex Diaz. I'm sorry. He is our new recreation manager. And so we're working, he and I are working with the staff and we're, we're all coming up with that vision together. And then the fitness area, we want to, we're really trying to um, determine what, what that will be. It's got equipment in there now. Um, are we adding to it or, you know, we're just really looking at every space. So the fitness stuff, what comes with your membership and what's the class you're going to pay for? Um, and I said this at the Park Commission the other night, we're really, our competition for a long time through COVID is, is now YouTube. You can go to YouTube or you can go to, or you can have a Peloton, but you're doing a lot at home. And we'd love to see you come back because the benefits of doing this as a group are just, you know, monumental uh, for the social aspect of it. So we'd love to see you come back in. So we've got to, we've got to figure out, you know, what is it that everyone's looking for and, and go from there. And so that's what I got for you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So my quick, my quick question is, are, since we're starting all over from ground level, from cleaning and, and working on the floors to everything, are they going to come in? And Joe, this is probably in your, what you're, you're paying attention to me. That means you're waiting <laughs> on the edge of his seat. I know. Does, does that mean that we're going to reevaluate the cost. Are we going to do a membership like the zoo where you have an all-inclusive come in, swipe your card, play dominoes, have coffee? <laughs> you know where I'm going with this as we've no, sat not through at all, this. But, uh, <laughs> Chair, counselors, I, I will not take too much of Colette's uh, direction out of this, but we talked this week about trying to simplify all of the membership fees for the recreation. Uh, it goes even as far as having a we have a gym membership and we have a pool membership we have a we have a adult center membership they are looking into combining all of them make it a lot simpler and so that people can come and go to in every every service that they want keep it as tight as possible so we are reevaluating all of those at this time um, and we'll We'll be putting those forward as soon as we can find that model that we're really comfortable with. So are we going to have a workshop with the public so they can give input on what they want back in the adult center? Because from what I understand, 
some of the boys kind of like it over there at the new rec center instead of going back. Yeah, and, and, and those are the pool players. So the, uh, the, the pool players, see, we, moved the, we moved them over. We moved everything into the Rec and Aquatic Center so we could keep operating when we could not find staff to operate the adult center. Uh, we actually ended up keeping Wednesdays open as the quilters finished out their, their, their tenure in the building. They, it, it expired in December. But uh, we tried to keep everybody working. Yeah, our pool players uh, really like the, uh, the new building. We're having a little bit hard time bringing them back over, but we'll put them against the pickleball players and see who we can move. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but it is. It's like trying to find out exactly where to put them and, and how to use them. Uh, we, we were limited on the number of rooms that we have, that we breakout rooms at the rec center. That's our big challenge there, mm -hmm. is, is that there's only so many things that can go in there. And pool tables, you are not supposed to move them in and out. Yes. I mean, because you'll you'll set them off and, and then they can't hit the ball work straight. So so the whole idea is that we're going to have to move some of this back. And um, and we are looking, I think we talked about possibly doing the fitness center at the adult center, because really the young ones aren't used, aren't really allowed to use that equipment for insurance purposes, which then will free us up additional space at the rec center for other things. Colette and her team are, are working on exactly how to do that. I'm just stealing their thunder right now. So it's just an on, ongoing, so the public needs to know it's an ongoing moving monster that will finally have a goal in the end. Yep. And, and our goal is to bring, and, and you, Colette, already mentioned that as well, too, is that we're, we're going to be reaching out to everybody to try to figure out. They have plans to go talk to the Joy Center because the, the, we don't need to be competitive with Correct. anybody. We want to be complementary through that structure. So if the Joy Center is able to provide certain services over there, we won't provide those. We'll provide the services that somebody's not already providing, and then we'll make a longer, longer direction. We have over 11,000 people in the city that are over the age of 55 that would have fit the the current parameters of being over there. When we have 400 for a six-month window, you know we need to do something better with those numbers, and so that's the whole intent. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Moore, do you have any? I, I, I'd struggle with the questions about the adult center. Um, I just don't, I guess I haven't been in there to see how much work had really been done and if they had finished all the, 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 the upkeep that they were going to do and um, to make it look more modern and stuff or what those kind of things that we're working on. Um, I still have issues with the fees at the adult, you know, the adult, the adult center. I still think, you know, unless it's just a little, you know what I mean, per per event or something. I don't understand the rent in the rooms and stuff, but membership I think is nominal over there for that concept. But I just think that um, you know, you know, we had such a fight with the, you know, with the pricing and that stuff and that stuff. Uh, you know, I, you know, I gave up on fighting the zoo and fighting the museum, but I really think that because of the, the, the vernacular of the people that it serves, unless you're renting out some of those rooms, that we should not focus necessarily on a admission fee, so to speak, or something like that. Maybe some event fees, you know, if they're doing events or some tournament fees, those kind of things, yes, but just everyday, you know, fees, I, I just, I just, I really, I think we could just, I don't, I think that's a battle I long, no longer want to keep hearing about. Um, but I like some of the programming stuff that you were conversating about, uh, the movie night thing. I, I don't know anymore because what well, ain't the movie theater ain't open that much. So you know, there's a book club thing. So I think adding some new things would be good. That benefit that little weight room over there is so tiny. So I'm not sure unless you plan on spreading it out just a little bit into one of those other rooms. I have a difficulty seeing how many people we could fit into that little room. But it would not be a bad idea, like Joe said, about using that those video things over there. And if you want to use the weight room part, you have to go over there. But some of the young, other people are going to fuss a little bit because my kids are over here playing basketball. So I'm going to go in here because that's what I did. They had a game. I'm going to go here and go to this little room over here and do my little thing while, you know, the other kids are around. So separating it, I don't know how great of an idea that would be either. But um, I like the idea where it's going. Um, I like the new people that's coming on. But I kind of think let's 
I think we should just hush hush on what we're trying to, if uh, try, I know Miss Miss Best, is, you know, Council Best is not going to agree with me, but um, <laughs> but <laughs> I know she's not going to agree, but I just really. It's a business. It. It's a business. <laughs> I know life is a business, but every you don't have, you don't pay for every breath you take. So, but it's life's a business, and we charge him <laughs> for everything else. And those are, I think, that's a different population. That's kind of why I really. You know, we'll argue and fuss about this, and that's a diff whole different population. And like she said, there's a lot of other funding. So there's plenty of places to rent, plenty of rooms for that. I'm mean, just mean the everyday people that just come in and get some popcorn, whatever, whatever. You know, those type of things. I just don't think we should be. I I, I don't think we should charge a, a regular come in the building fee. But that's just me, and I'm sure we'll get to talk about it a little more before it's all done. <laughs> don't you say anything, Miss Bess. Councilor Bess, no yes, I'll be quiet for a little bit. All right. All right, so next is Nancy Lopez. All right, Mr. Chair, Councilors, give you an update on what, we, what we're what we doing at Nancy Lopez. We've had it for a couple of weeks, I guess. We took over January 1. So ahead of, ahead of that, we actually had hired some people and had them over in our office uh, teaching them point of sale. And now that we're on site, we're cleaning things up. So you can see before and after pictures there. I'll just hit the highlights. So those are some things that uh, were landlocked with, with equipment and so on. Once we moved that out, uh, we were able to clean some things up, make sure the equipment worked. And uh, so that's just the cart barns. We're analyzing everything that's there. That's some of the storage areas that were cleaned out. You see on the right, we've steam cleaned the carpets, getting ready to paint the walls. Um, obviously, if you have shelves and it's horizontal, you're going to put stuff on it. So some of the shelving is going to go away. We're just getting organized. Uh, we're making sure we communicate with our customers. Uh, biggest thing is where those golf clubs are stored on the bottom left. Uh, there's numbers on the floor, but uh, we don't necessarily know who owns the clubs. <laughs> so we've contacted everyone. They've picked them up. We're going to be locking them up in that back room, and if you can actually describe that you own them, uh, and then we'll work through that process. Once we clean the room where the clubs are at, then we're going to figure out what we're going to do with that space. We'll, do it, we'll analyze uh, the value of that, that part right there. So the carts, we're getting them fixed up, tightening everything, make sure that they're getting inspected, staff, getting trained on daily operations, um, and cleaning. You know, we're just getting the place opened. Uh, so we're doing different things, learning how to wash windows and and scrub. Uh, we've got a new ice machine coming in, different things like that. We've studied the heating and air conditioning, traffic flows, and we're working on everything. Uh, first, we have to sort through the stuff. Now, you got to have a business plan. Once we get everything settled, well, you know, where are we headed? you got to have a vision, right? Well, you know, we got to pick up more customers, and we got to take care of the people who live here. So, these are some things we're looking at. We had the uh, athletic director and the, and the uh, golf coaches in our meeting the other day, and we're working on those relationships. I'll be reaching out to, to NEMI and the other courses and go back to having tournaments. So, yeah, summer golf camps, 517, trying to get the high school kids over there. Uh, first tee, we've already reached out to them. Uh, we want to get the juniors back in, and so we can have uh, golf leagues, golf clinics, you know, for the kids, host a junior, junior PGA. That hasn't happened. So we keep going on uh, golf clinics, right? We want everybody, we want everyone out there. So uh, we got to show it off. We'll fix it up, clean it up, show it off to everyone, and make sure everyone knows and uh, what we have out there. The tournaments, uh, they were kind of shy on some tournaments. We want to pick that up, we we'll automate a few things, and uh, tighten up staff and reach out, just like we do other other business. We we'll reach out and uh, to the companies here in town, a lot of them know us already and uh, to help offset some cost, uh, you have fundraisers. All right, leagues, you don't have golf leagues, not really, not, not all the courses, and not enough out there. So that's something else we're looking at. So you see it, it's just planning and communication. So yes, we're there, we're gonna take care of business. We'll reach out to the people that, that uh, they're curious about the place and, and get it built up. Now, some of the things we noticed that we haven't seen the lady leagues in a long time, right? And we haven't hosted any leagues whatsoever. We've reached out to those groups already and uh, started communication. So you have X amount of tea times, X amount of space, days, and we're trying to fit everybody in. Now, we're kind of new to this business. I said we're on week two. We got a good staff, though. We got a good pro, we got a good 
good office manager. Uh, we've got some staff. Uh, I stole Charlie from, from Rec. Mm -hmm. He knows all the kids in town. Uh, he's actually teaching baseball to, to the kids as kids, right? So that's going to help us with communication. Uh, one of the things uh, that we're working also is, is getting the, the liquor license transferred from the old company back to the city. We've started the paperwork. Uh, it's a little sporty because the state's still working from home. So if they show up, we get to talk. There's not emails going back and forth. Uh, I'm uncomfortable until I see all the forms. It can't be that easy. I've done it before. And they say, oh, it's just an email. <laughs> no, it's not. I need about 50 forms to fill out, and I'm sure you're going to need some money. Uh, we cannot we cannot serve uh, beverages until I see a license on the wall. Uh, at this point, the entire staff is trained. <laughs> you know, we're trained to serve, but everything's locked up, okay? And uh, this is a new, brand new uh, beverage cart we purchased. It just came off the trailer the other day. Uh, inside it is actually a tarp that goes over those little rings. And uh, we get it fired up. It has a, a cash register in it. You'll see there's the cash register right there. These are tubs of ice to put your products in. These are trash cans. Uh, if you look right here, that's actually clean ice. And we, we put a cup rack right here. So if you want ice in your soda, we'll, we'll pop the lid and put clean ice in it and not the ones that the cans are in, right? So we're working on that. Uh, one of the things that we heard, when I get an ice machine, I say that, get an ice machine I'm putting in after cleanup. One of the things that had issues in the past is really how to marshal play. They, they tried, they, it was tried, I said they, it was tried to solve this problem by pricing. So I'm gonna have different prices for different people. So if I think someone's gonna play slow, then I don't need them on the weekend, you know? And we're gonna clean all that up. We're training the marshals how to marshal. Uh, it's just negotiation. I move ahead a couple holes or, you know, you go to the, to the other nine or, uh, there's things that we can do to help our customers and make it pleasant out there. And it's just communications, really, and, and just golf etiquette. So that's kind of where we're at. We want to know what everybody thinks. So we've been out there talking to folks, and it was suggested, and it's a very good idea. We're going to have a, a, a community meeting. So it's going to be over at the Rec Center. I'm going to invite everyone Monday, February 7th at 6 p.m., and we're going to See what everyone thinks. After that, after we communicate with everyone, the marketing department is going to help me put a survey together with one of those monkey things, right? <laughs> and uh, we're going to send it out and ask. But I'd rather communicate first and say, hey, oh, by the way, <laughs> we're going to do this, not just have it sit there and then say, well, ain't no one do anything with it, right? So it's just communications. Uh, obviously, uh, if taking over, there's always things that change, and you know, we're there every day and you know if you ask someone's opinion they'll give it to you and we're actually uh, listening so that's kind of where we're at right now in the first two weeks <laughs> so not bad yeah uh, let me just piggyback on top of that as well too uh, mr chair counselors one of the things that we discovered I, again this is us taking over a service that we have not fully provided for over 12 years so uh, what we did is we've consolidated all of our, all the city policies, everything in the ordinances, everything that was on the websites, we pulled it all together and we created a, uh, essentially a rules book uh, for, the, for the facility. What we're learning though is, is that at, over this 12 year window, there are certain policies that were not followed. There were certain policies that were introduced to take care of one thing or another. I think those are the things that if you're hearing anybody complain about the service that we're providing out there, those are the things that are, seem to be catching us. It's kind of that discovery mode through that in that we have not, they weren't enforcing this. And so we, we are, and so there's a difference and there's a, there's a uh, irritation on some of our players. Vice versa, there are some policies in place that we did not know about that we're trying to figure out exactly how to utilize them. So um, I guess the only thing I will say on top of what Mr. Burris has said is that please excuse our dust while we're remodeling as we build that up. We believe this community meeting is gonna be very important to at least share what our vision and our direction is and then actually hear from them of what they love and what they, what they hate about what we're trying to accomplish. So uh, that's all I wanted to make sure I added to that, so. It's very exciting, to tell you the truth. I mean, if you like adrenaline, this is fun. 
I mean, it's asking everybody's opinion, getting things cleaned up, digging into things, and it's been great. And uh, get some very, very, very strong uh, people out there that care and, and change things up, you know, get the youth involved and everybody else and their brother and, and communicate. I'm kind of excited about it, too. Cool. So, so my question is on your beverage cart, you're going to have a New Mexico server on it every single time? Yeah, you have to. Because they have to be able to cut them off, and that's the law. Yeah, actually, the law is like two, two drinks. Two, two to per two, each cart? Two per person. Oh, oh, two drinks per person? Yeah. Oh, you're funny. No, I'm oh, oh, the golfers no. in Roswell. <laughs> two uh, per hole? Two per hole. We'll get it. Two drinks per, per person at a time, and it, right. oh, that, oh, then, oh. It becomes, then it becomes no. the... Uh, the check as to yep. whether or not you're right. you're capable of. But whoever's running the cart is going to be a server. Anybody, uh, anybody that's going to be alcohol. Okay. Are you going to have two on the cart? And and I know it's going to be expensive, but you're going to have bullies out there. I, oh, did I say no, that? Loud? I do. I do know that I signed off on two individuals, employees <laughs> that will be helping with that. I don't know if we will run them two all the time, but. You'll, you'll definitely it, for the tournaments yeah. and, and structure like that. We'll make sure that everybody is. Yeah, you'll get your feet wet yep. and you'll figure it out. Just saying. Okay. Well, we have two staff minimum all the time there. And then we've got the kids, the part time kids. We finally got down. We have three or four or five of those come in at the end of the day and help out. But uh, but keep in mind, we're going to have the, the beverage cart, but you're actually going to have a marshal. <laughs> so you have you have staff real close together and communications and a point of sale will follow that cart. We've already got got that set up. Nice. Uh, I got to test the the Wi-Fi on the entire course, make sure it's tight. Uh, right now we're doing credit cards. Uh, it's beginning in February, we're starting doing cash. Nice. Doing really good. They're following the policies. We're tight on how to deposit the money and uh, you know baby steps. We want to make sure we're not having compounding. Problems. We don't yes. start any. We don't want to make them worse, right? So we're starting from the beginning. Yes, it's brand new. Starting from the beginning. Public, we're starting from the beginning. <laughs> Thank you, <clears throat> Council Moore. Do you have any questions? I, I'm not a fan of golf very much, so I, I, I look forward to. I really like the idea of us doing this ourselves. Finally. You know, I'm new with this, so I've never known anything other than the other person running it. I, I just think this is such an opportunity for us to get it right and make it, you know, make it, you know, make it valuable and make it, you know, a part of, you know, an, an asset more. Um, so I, 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 I'm looking forward to see what's going on. It's not like I'm going to be out there. My son loves to golf or something. So if y'all have some golf <laughs> tournaments, you know, he loves to golf. So, you know, invite him, he'll come down and stuff. So he's very good too, but. I think it's a waste of, you know, money and time. You know, it's good exercise, I guess, if you walk in a little, I guess if you're walking in the, if you're walking in little old people's shoes, I might want to go out and ride a little golf cart. That's a little, maybe I can run the point of sales thing on the golf cart one time or so. That's that, funny. I'm glad that Don Trail plays. We'll get it down here. Yeah, so he, and he's really good. So, um, but I'm just like charity, and, and I know y'all have already lining up events that are y'all following up, like piggyback on some of the events that maybe he had our that they, I want to know, say he, but the, <laughs> that the golf course previously had already. You know, I know yes. there was a couple things that were already yearly. Y'all piggybacked on that. Y'all don't have to start over on on any of those things, right? Right. We've already reached out and booked a bunch of tournaments already uh, that that already came to the course. So yeah, we didn't lose those. We've already talked to those folks and we've got those on file. That's what I love the idea of the kid one. I love the idea of that. I don't think I've ever or <laughs> father and son one or something. I love yeah. that kind of idea. You know, um, uh, believe it or not, my two-year-old granddaughter goes golfing with Dontrell. She has her own little golf clubs. And she'd be out there like swinging, and she says par, and she don't even know what she's saying, but she par. So you know, so I think it's a great idea, you know, father son, you know, tournament or something. Um, and you know, just to, I think I think we got a, this is a good place for something new, something different that we've not always been arguing about. So that that's the only reason I like what you were talking about because this is something different that's going to add to, you know. Because it's us. It's something we, like I said, we have a chance to get this right, make a few people happy. We always gonna make some people happy, unhappy. Like <laughs> Ms. Smith said, there's always those, oh. those people don't have any skin in the game. You know, <laughs> you know, 
those people are going to be. I'm training you. I'm training you right, Angela. Awesome. <laughs> so those people are going <laughs> to be on. And I really like where this is going. I love the idea of the community meeting. I love that idea of a community meeting, like she said, for this one and for this, the adult center. I think those ideas are great. So what the people are looking for, if you know, like you said, if you got some skin in the thing, you think you have some input in there. More people will, will be involved, and I'll invite more people because oh, they listen to me. They, I said we should put a you know a red dot right here, and they did. So let's. So I think this is. I, I, I'm okay with this. I'm okay. I'm good. I think that's. I think it's a great start. Good job. Old. Good job that man. Y'all got working so hard over there. <laughs> we are. Yeah, we're every day. We're painting and cleaning. I like how she's coming alive. See, I told you. It was, I told you it was exciting. Uh, as far as communication, there's a stack of my business cards there. If anybody has a question, that's scheduled eight. <laughs> okay. Well, and I I was happy to see the marshal I and and have marshal the marshals out because especially with us having a liquor license there, that's one of the things they're going to need to make sure that that no one's bringing drinks in because with our liquor license now, it becomes a liability if someone's bringing their own liquor in and um. And our servers are liable if you bring alcohol in. Eight. Right. And so us having a marshal there. I mean, before we didn't have a liquor license. Um, somebody that goes around and governs play and makes sure everybody. They have a badge. They, doing. they got a badge and a gun. <laughs> so they look no, not really. really. Not really. Don't take it seriously. <laughs> no, so, I was like, that's a great idea. Now, I mean, that's a great idea. Can I get a taser or something? I'll go do it. Yeah, get a taser or something. But most most <laughs> golf courses, uh, big golf courses, have marshals. In fact, when I was 11 years old, I was playing at Pecan down in uh, San Antonio, and the marshal came up and told me that they didn't allow. Uh, I think I had sleeveless shirt on and um, I had to have a collared shirt to play golf and the, that's how strict some of the marshals were um, but um, he but anyway um, but but that's with with the beverages that was my own contention of us selling alcohol out there was that we controlled making sure there wasn't um, I can't put the I can't put the servers in jeopardy so right that's communications also um, put um, the flyers out put the rules out and, Oh, we'll just discuss. Pardon me. New signage. New signage. Yeah. New now, the other question I have: Are we implementing a tiered green fee? I know we passed one in 2010 that never got implemented. Um, and so, any 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 fees, any structure that is currently in the city code, we will uh, we will put out there for the value of that. If it is not in there, uh, what I've asked staff to do is to not make any of those types of changes for at least this first year. So we'll abide by exactly what we have in place because uh, first off, we want to make sure that we're providing the service before we start adjusting to whatever the conditions should be. I know it's come through council at least twice. Um, it never got implemented um, at the at nice the thing is that we should be able to run that down. And so. and and that's uh, and just to be clear, tiered means that. If you're in, if you live in the city of Roswell, you pay one fee. If you live outside the city of Roswell, you pay another fee. If you live outside State. Mexico, you pay another fee. Um, most golf courses I've ever been to have that. Um, municipal golf courses, that is. And I would say that that was not on the website, so we will we'll look that up. And I'm sure, everything's fair and consistent. And it, and 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 sure. most golfers expect that. And that and that's not something that it's you know. And it's not affecting our local players because it's going to be the same price. But yep. when you start looking, you know, the city subsidizes it, your taxes, you should pay for it, play cheaper than somebody coming from out of state. Um, all right. And the other thing I was going to say is if there was anybody we knew that could contact Nancy Lopez, um, um, we might be able to um, let her know about some of the things that are happening. She said when I talked to her last week that she was planning on coming. All right. At least two to three weeks, but she's going to be playing on the old ladies tour since her knees are replaced. Oh, all right. We can have a grand opening and cool. have her come for a grand opening. Well, and that's one of the things that I just I just had to mention that for some reason I don't know why. Um, so, all right, number six, Joe Bowman. Oh, oh that's. Okay. We've jumped. Okay. That's, that's, that's seven. That's all right. That's pretty. Oh, that's there. 
Okay, so in the rate department, we've been meeting with all the league associations this month. Um, we've been opening good lines of communication and we've been asking them for a list of their infrastructure needs. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're, we're putting a list together of everything and then we'll assess all the needs as, as one and what we can do now, what we can do later, that type of thing. But we do want to say that no, this field is not for sale. <laughs> I mean, that's all I can say on that, right? Or do you want? To and I, I, um, I actually, uh, Mr. Chair and members of the committee, I asked Colette if I could add this bullet point because there had been some talks and some rumors. Um, the, our team had met last summer, uh, actually prior to last summer, uh, when we first had our sports tourism uh, workshop, and uh, this field is incorporated into that sports tour tourism strategy. And so I'm not sure where rumors have started or not started, but we just wanted to put it on the record that at this present time, um, the city does not wish to sell this field. Period. Yes. Period. Okay. 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 And we have the invaders there this year. We do. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And she's going to share that. And it's, coming. it's coming. It's coming. going really slow it's tonight. Great. It's coming. Yeah. Oh, Juanita, you got the touch. I don't. Know. Okay. There we go. Oh, oh exactly. now it went twice. Okay. There we go. Okay. There we go. So we did talk to the invaders coach, Andrew Dunn, um, because, like I said, we were reaching out to everybody. Um, and we kind of identified the, and he identified his following needs. Uh, the liquor license, and I'm gonna ditto everything that Jim said. Um, we sent that in November, uh, December 10th, 9th, 10th. Haven't heard a thing from the state. So we're checking on that. And um, we, we understand that that is a top priority. Um, so he identified the bleachers. Um, a lot of this stuff, when we when we get this list and, and we've talked to every, all the leagues, you know, Noonop and all the fields, all that, um, with Lions and with... Lions, soccer. Yeah. Everyone. All right. So what we're looking at is some of this stuff, we're going to go back then and, and we had this huge list. What can we do right now? And so we're going to tackle those first. What do I need to come back and ask for money for? What are we going to ask for money in the budget? What's what's an ICIP item? You know, kind of identify all this and then put it down in, okay, so the first year we're doing this, second year we're going to do this, and then really communicate that back with the lease. All right, so what they identified this, we went out there and we identified um, a couple of items ourselves, and that's the update on this one. So we are looking at everything. And so you'll see, I mean, like this one right here, that's that's a pretty big item. So um, we got to see where does that fit in on the list? What year? What, you know, what do we ask for? When do we ask for it? And that kind of stuff. So that's, that's our next step is to start getting some estimates on everything we want to do and then start placing this in priority order. So when you come to your lights, is there any way you can team up with what we were presented to the other day with the fields out here? Because I know there's specialized lights because we tried to do that back when I was doing ball with the boy. And maybe if we can get a massive purchase together. Certainly, uh, we, yeah, we can look at that. Uh, usually our quantities are never enough even if we were to replace all the lights to get a, a really good discount for all of them. But we could look at that. I um, And I will piggyback on that for just a little bit with the lights as well as, as the uh, the field needing additional help as well too. Uh, we're very thankful that the Pecos League has the Roswell Invaders here. I believe that a conversation with Mr. Dunn about that importance of this relationship should occur because I think the Pecos League should be able to help participate with some of this, these improvements as well too, just like any other sports field out there that that, that a team is in, um, and and I think that that would it would go a long way for that. I know the Pecos League enjoys having the Roswell brand, and so I'd like a little bit of a return, a little bit of love back as well too. If we work partner together, we'll make it farther, faster, 
and um, and I think that's the, those are that's where we want to go with all these improvements out there. Uh, as a they're a for-profit entity, again, all of our fields are generally used by the public, and so there has to be this little balance within there. But I agree. I I, I think any if we put the lights in there, they need to be the updated lights that actually serve the purpose. I think there are some shadow areas out there right now with the current lighting for depending on how what how dark the play is out there. So well, you can get a Hoda XL too. See if they want to sponsor. <laughs> they they've been good sponsors. I mean, they helped with the museum and everything. So yes, there may be a there may be the possibility of that as well too. So. Okay. And Council Person Best, let me. That's a good idea about the you know bundling and, and getting the best price. We are doing the list as well, and then we'll filter out. Okay, how many fields need lights? Mm -hmm. And so yeah, we would take that into consideration and not just kind of do this one this year and then this one next. As I know, noon off the junior field, they wanted lights when I was out there years ago, and they had to have triple SA and all of that. They can't be wired or whatever. Correct. It has to be all underground, I think. Any league that put lights on there, then we'll we'll look at it as a whole. And please come find me because we, yes. the, we have the uh, programming so you'll be able to control the lights from your office. Okay. And uh, we'll move forward. We have a list of You can't lights. control the tennis lights from your office. Basically. No, I'm just going to say, what? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> anyway, we're going to tell you. Okay. I'm just and, stirring the pot. And the lights, <laughs> the lights at Lions Hondo, they have a lot more lights, but they also came to us um, years back and, mm -hmm. and asked to partner with us. and we bought the lights they paid us back for the lights and so they i mean they put lights on our facility for us um, that's what yeah we got to assess all of that and before we get off of joe bowman i know we have if, yes, we, we have people yes. volunteers, sorry. volunteers with us yes. um well one thing the the liquor license my husband spoke before the city council what march 19 20 19 mm -hmm. and it, that liquor license was voted upon and was cleared we still do not have that liquor license. it was approved we're just waiting on the state right now they're, they're working from home and it's, I, yeah, yeah it's a little sporty but event. where did it get lost in between it that didn't that's just the state I, that's I just the state yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll give a little bit of a history but i i won't get very specific within that there was a bunch of information that mr dunn had to provide as well too so that that put in a long time frame as well to throw into it that we ran into the covid season as well too everybody started working a little bit differently i would say that the city has some fault in that as well too because as mr burris has talked about there's a lot of different paperwork that has to be t's crossed i dotted city council can vote on it and then we have to implement it and we're at the will of two or three different people and and as mr dunn was the recipient of the license for the field it became we had to have information from that it took a while for that as well too i won't i won't throw him under the bus any farther than that but but that was that was the challenge that we had of getting back and forth it's almost like a tennis match and that okay we need this information now now we need your firstborn now we need a blood type now we need now we're going to give you our blood type and so it, it just became convoluted but i will say that when once we hit covid everything stopped sure. even though even though it was out there and everything and some of this stuff had to be restarted uh once we got through covid um you know i i, I won't gripe too much about working from home but if we're paying full price for the same service that we were doing when you were working in the office to home, I should get the same service. But that I'll stop, get off my soapbox for that one. But that's what happened. It just a series of incidents that came through there. The nice thing is, though, is that until we have the license in hand, the Joe Bauman Field was able to do a picnic license in order to do that. And you guys were working really well with uh, uh, Black Hawk Brewery in order to at least have some type of service out there. So. Uh, we, I, I thought that was a good kind of hold pattern until we could get through all this governmental red tape. 
we just went to so many of the city meetings and to work so hard to get that liquor license. And we thought, what you all voted for? It? Oh, yeah, it's here. And you know, no, it's not. It almost feels like you want to drink, doesn't it? I mean, uh, in, my, in my mind, because I, I feel the same way. I, the the liquor laws in New Mexico are so interesting. I'll say that, and uh, they're very challenging. The nice thing is, is that the city council has said that we can have a license there, and now we just have to wrap it up. So, hey, I may I step in for a minute. I have to leave for a minute. I am still at work, so I'm headed home. So I have to log off. Um, I I had some questions about the rec depart the the fields and stuff because I've got a few calls from several different people about the progress y'all's process of how we're going along, saying who's needed what and where all these fees going to and so on and so forth. I heard I don't know who the lady was. I didn't that the that just said something about um how that they were going to line that up. I just want us to make sure that. Because the understanding is some fields are, are, are some some of the people are feeling that they're being, you know, it's not equal across the board, you know. So um, I just want us to be transparent when we're going through how you doing these changes, how we're doing these upgrades and lights or whatever, whatever. I just want it to be transparent and I want it to seem like that it's not like, well, well, I don't know, even know who they are. I'm going to say Lions Hondo. That's the only name I know. That Lions Hondo is getting all the blah, 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 and somebody down the street is not getting anything. And I put in an order for new this, that, and the other, and I haven't heard back from anybody. So I just want us to, as a council, to be transparent when it comes to our children, when it comes to these fields. We know where a lot of, uh, you know, I'm on my soapbox again. We know where some of the, a lot of the money is coming from and the money, those type of situations, which fields have, you can tell by the looking other field which fields have more money which which fields have more parents to put in more or whatever the situation may be but i just want us to be transparent and when we doing these fixing and these changes on these fields that it doesn't look like one field is getting prioritized over you know somebody else and so as i heard that lady speak about a list i think that's a great idea but i just want us to make sure because it's going to come I'm telling you now, it's already, there's, they already, are, there's already a meeting in the plan trying to get together to try to figure out why this field isn't getting this field, or this stuff, and this field is. And so um, I just want us to be prepared for that, that it doesn't look, you know, there, there's any no sign or improper, impro, impro, you know what I'm trying to say, that word. Uh, and I know and I know it's not, but, you know, it's just, it's just going to seem that way. So I just want, as long as you have all our ducks in a row so that when it comes when it comes to us, we're being proactive instead of reactive. Is the reason I'm having that conversation right now because I want us to be proactive, so that when the people are saying she gets, they got two lights and we got three lights, or whatever the situation might be, um, that we're ready for it. Um, and so I have to step off. Uh, the janitor's gonna come put me out. So uh, I'm sorry, I have to go. Okay. No. Problem. All right. Thank you. Go ahead. I want to hear. I'm listening. Ms. Moore, um, I did want to just kind of give you an update of how we are, how what our approach is. Um, we are making some changes at recreation, and so our point of contact for fields and field maintenance and working with the association will be Mr. Alex Diaz. Um, I've been working with Colette, and um, together we are coming up with the plan of how we are maintaining and upkeeping our fields. Um, so I've asked them um, to provide that communication with the associations, gather and collect the list and use that list as they prepare um, to budget for the next fiscal year. Um, my goal for them is to make sure that we are actually starting a project and finishing the project within that fiscal year. So for example, we had three open projects uh, within this current year um, that needed to be completed. One of them was room 27. That was a project that had been lingering for a couple of years. The other one was the roof at Nunoptimus Field and the roof at Cielo Grande. Um, the roof at Nunoptimus has just been completed. I know that they are working on the Cielo Grande roof, and then um, the other associations are also putting in a list. They currently have a budget of 50000 in their budget this year. Um, I was what Colette was speaking to is whatever's money is left over, what can we hit with this year's current budget and then start pre-planning what the projects are for next year so that we are fair and that we are consistent because we serve all of Roswell and not just a specific area. 
Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. I love that. Uh, I love that. And that's what I'm talking about is to have the list ready when someone comes complaining. Well, here's your list. This is what they did. This is what we did. This is how they got through it. So I, I think that's going to be a great uh, that's going to nip a bunch of that whining in the bud. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> She's starting right, to talk like have... me now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to stop hanging with you. All right, you guys have a good night. <laughs> All right, thanks. And I also want to let everybody know that I did reach out to the athletic director for Roswell Schools and the, the booster club for Roswell because the invaders aren't the only um, users of Bo um, Joe Bowman Field. So I, I reached out to them and said we were going to be having this meeting. And um, I didn't hear back from them. Um, uh, I did find out I didn't know Roswell coach was Ernie, Ernie Lujan, which I coached with him. So I, I can get a hold of Ernie and, um, and, and find out their needs too of what, you know, let us know and we can yeah. contact if you. So, cause that's what, that's what we've got to do is make sure that everybody's, you know, contacted and working together. Okay. I was surprised that the netting is not listed on there we went and it, took pictures it was it was it was in the deck for joe Bonham. it was it, it was, was it was somewhere. it was the one, one right, right, right to that one Okay. I thought these were the only two. No, there, there's another page. Oh, I'm sorry. Page. Okay. Yeah, right there. Yeah, I saw it up there. Netting needs to be. We went out and took pictures. We've been worrying about the netting for several years. At one time, we had a company that was willing to come in with us and help us pay for the netting, but we couldn't afford that. Like we wanted. But and we went out the other day, and this hole is big enough for a person to get through. No. Uh, it's way up at the top, and I, I can pass these around. We went around, we counted, we introduced ourselves. I'm Patty Swanson. <laughs> this is George. I'm sorry. <laughs> we went around and counted all the small holes, and we got what 46 Ooh, that are down on people sitting in the stands. Ooh, the ball couldn't come through. Bird. So I've got pictures of them. I mean, they're not little ones. They're big ones, yes. and they're down low enough. We had a group night several years ago, and one of they were bringing lots of little ones. It was bad enough. It was embarrassing. They went around and zip tied all of those together so that their children would be all right in the game. Now that, that's pretty bad. <laughs> and last year, this is the what we call a knee wall. I'm not sure what it's called, but. The cement what they call? Yes. caps, there were 12 of them that were undone. He fixed them, except this one is missing, which is bad because the kids go, We have, this is a family type deal. I mean, families come, the kids are out there, they're running around, they're close to these knee walls. They love to poke their hand down there. Well, I hate to tell you, but the transfer put down in there and have come crawling back out. But we don't have one to replace. But 46 of these big holes, to me, looks like somebody could get sued. <laughs> I'll just say it. Um, so you're welcome to look at these. We went out and took these pictures yesterday of all of these holes that are there. Can I, so, can I have them? Yes, you can. Do you want to bet? Okay, I can have them. Perfect. And on a positive note, again, we went out yesterday. And the field is in it's really good shape. It's just wonderful shape. All the trash is picked up. Uh, yeah, it's put the really grass is cut. There's no, there's all the trash cans are gone. empty. It really it's, 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 We were impressed. Do you have like a Friends of the Invaders, like the Friends of the Zoo or whatever, so they can donate? Just saying. <laughs> I, I don't know. Well, we have we, the 501C. No. Okay. Well, they and they can still donate. I mean, they can still donate and we put it on a line item. We've got that set up now in our system. I will tell you, the friends of the invaders are housing all of these kids yeah. that's coming up to play ball. So, so they do have a good group okay. for that. And it's, uh, but I, I think that's where, uh, as we look at sponsorships for the field, and everything else, we should be incorporating in what what our needs are as to what that sponsorship should look like. And um, and I think that's where that's where we'll see the community help step up and and do that as well too. They don't house a kid, they might be able to help with a net. 
and that can, and that can be the the sponsorship goes double because it hits invaders and it hits raw high and so if you know mm -hmm. and so that's where it's you know is raw high going to be used in the field? they will continue to use that field um they they need two fields and um and so that do they have their schedule at it? because we already have our schedule and i've already booked group nights yeah they have their and they should already have their schedule we had a contract last year last year one of our games have we received they, a copy of it yet no no all right so we we have not received a copy of the schedule yet so yeah, or an MOU. Yeah, well, I mean, as as in my mind, in my mind, I think Roswell High and uh, Invader should provide a schedule to us so that well, we can prepare and, for that. And last year, with COVID, yeah. they, they started playing late, and it got and they went later. Normally, they are done by the time y'all start. Yes. And so last year, there was that conflict because of COVID and them starting later because all spring sports started a lot later because. Winter sports started later and everything ran later. And so um, usually um, usually they're done by um, For school's out, right? May, yeah, yeah. yeah. by mid-May. And this and was already in the in middle June, of June yeah. when we had that conflict and we and so, moved one of our, we, Andrew moved, moved one. one of those. <laughs> and that's where I was thinking, y'all usually don't start until right at the end of May, right? Well, spring training starts like May 15th, I think. Right, and so that usually is where so those things that they're finishing up it's and y'all are starting. And so um, COVID hit us last year where that, and when I talked to the, the AD um, the other night, um, he did, I mean, he, he, he specifically said that too, was that there was a, a commingling that they had never had before because of COVID. Yeah. And he didn't seem to think that was going to happen this year because we're we're moving forward with with sports. So, well, and then I'd just like to say we are we are have been really good stewards to that field. I mean, our guys work their tail off every year to make sure that field is in the best shape it is. Um, we always leave it much better shape than when we get it. Uh, I can't tell you how many hundreds of man hours those young men put out there to rework the field. And we have a drainage problem, as as everybody knows out there, especially when we had that flood. All the, all the <laughs> in you, July, in July. Yeah, I it was like a up, it was a lake. But, yeah, that our. 200 year yeah. rains within um, 30, we, 20 days of each other. We try not to bother the city with minor problems. Uh, we, we do spend our own money to oh. fix things out there that we can fix. But when it gets to be um, pricey and like the fence, the, the netting, we're just afraid that somebody's going to get hurt out there. And then I'm not real sure where the liability starts yes. and ends there either. So well, we appreciate you, and we appreciate the invaders. I I appreciate having that quality of baseball brought so that our our kids and our our little leaguers and our high schoolers can see. Um, because the the first year that we brought brought them in, it was amazing to me because I had just my son had just graduated and played. Um, Roswell High Ball, and then then they came on, and it was amazing the huge difference <laughs> the uh, quality from high school to that, um, and so we appreciate that. Um, any more we need on Chisholm? All right, uh, Chisholm. Chisholm. My turn again. Hi everybody. <laughs> this is easy. This part is not easy. <laughs> okay, got it. Chisholm School, you know, we're going to go down there. Uh, we had we went down there and asked all the people what they wanted. Remember that? And they said uh, they talked about the playgrounds up there at uh, at uh, Linda Vista. So this one's in sequence. We've actually unloaded that playground on the 24th. So I have two of them. One's going in right now at Carpenter, and then this one here is in storage. This week, 
we actually started hauling uh, compost. You saw dump trucks going back and forth. So I got compost out there at uh, Cahoon or Cielo Grande, I mean, and we'll make our own dirt. When we studied that out there, remember engineering went out, we're gonna have to remove about a foot of dirt because nothing's growing up there. So that's next. So I've got everything ready. I'm making the dirt to go in. <laughs> I got the playground ready to go in. So once engineering kind of gets in a cycle, we'll, we'll take off and start working. So uh, the idea is, is not to have to wait on anything, have everything pre-staged. This is the design of the playground that's going in. This was at, at Linda Vista, but uh, you'll see the, the swing here. You know, you get up on there and now you're Superman. Uh, this is the playground unit. There's the swings in here. Then you have a, a mom and, and, or a caregiver and a, and a baby. Then we have what we call bucket swings. We just put the kid down in there. We have some that, that lock in. So if you can't sit up straight, uh, there's a thing that comes over the top and a deal that comes up, locks in like a, a ride at the fair and then regular swings in there. So that way everyone, everyone has a chance to play on these playgrounds. So that's what's sitting there. We unloaded it. Um, there's another company that's gonna come in and, and install it. Uh, everything's been on order. The only thing we have to reach out for now is the bark to put in when we're done. On on uh, on this part, like I said, we're working with the uh, with engineering. We'll make sure we get some shade covers, and they kind of go back and forth. You know, maybe have basketball because we talked to all the folks down there. So right now, <clears throat> we just have to get out and uh, dig the dirt out, get some good dirt in there, get an estimate <clears throat> on the irrigation. And you know, we do a lot of the work ourselves. You know, once you got to you got some good people on the streets department. I mean, we can do this real quick, dig it out, and then uh, engineering and put the whiskers. You know, that, that there's a young man that has that road grader, does the alleys. He can hit them whiskers. So <laughs> we're ready to go. So, well, and you <clears throat> said not all the park has to be dug out, just the part where the building was. Well, yeah, with the concrete, well, concrete, the concrete dust. Yeah, the concrete dust, and it was not, yeah. And so we'll have to bring yeah. it to subgrade and bring it back up. The heavy part is you have uh, utilities there. We will reach out to uh, <laughs> uh, the electricians. We'll have to drop a pole and a meter for the irrigation box. Okay. We'll have to build the cages for that and that kind of stuff. But that's next on the list. Uh, we're going to have a couple of companies come out and look at that one. Uh, well, here real soon. My my other thing is I I mean we have four hundred thousand for this park and I want to try to keep it to that point where we can get it all done for that four hundred thousand. Um, yeah, we kind of well we know what the playground costs, right? And right. We can estimate the the asphalt or concrete. We had done some studies for the shade covers at the zoo with picnic tables and trash cans and all that kind of as a unit, and then. Uh, what is that price? Price of asphalt or concrete for the basketball? And uh, I don't. I think we're going to be shy of putting a trail around there. I think I can get everything else done. And, and we've got a trencher and dump trucks and equipment, so that's going to help. A little sweat, equity, and blood. You know, right. not a bad thing. I'm open for questions. All right, let's go to all inclusive. Inclusive. Yay, well, that's it's kind of fun too. I can make it switch. There we go. All close. The RFP went out Sunday, last Sunday. And uh, so if you're interested in that, engineering has the drawings and the bid packets. So you got to sign for them. Uh, bids will be open February 8th. At this time, we're asking for quotes for phase one. Phase one is uh, where's my mouse at? There we, there we go. Phase one, see that yellow? That's phase one, everything inside of there. You know, you gotta put the utilities in and grade everything, but that's phase one. This gives you an idea where it's at. Everybody's asking, it's right there by that parking lot at the Aquatic Center. There it is. So that's where that's gonna go. Uh, we're happy to get you know, the slope in the in the, uh, in the sewers and different things. We've studied that. We don't have to put a lift station, that kind of thing. So that's where we're at with that. We have the designs, we got the packet, it's going out to bid, off we go. Uh -oh. We're opening it February 8th. Um, the legislative session ends when? I will, I will. I'll just caution everybody that um, I know that we were in contact with uh, Representative Nybert yesterday. Uh, he was asking for the ICIP number for the all-inclusive park. He is intending to ask for additional money. 
if that money is somewhere upwards around the one million dollars i expect that we might stop the rfp uh before the awarding to expand out there because i'd rather not spend the money on remobilizing for a phase two mm -hmm. mobilize one time and do more work uh based on that new uh, number so just be aware that uh, those those dates are going to be fluid based upon what we learn out of the legislative cycle but i know that the autism society uh when we did our groundbreaking uh was wanting additional money and they were looking at a, almost a million dollars more into this facility so uh, rather than a 1.4 million dollar uh, park you're looking at a 2.4 million dollar all-inclusive park so so the only the only thing that I just caution everybody is on the timing because we want to make sure that this money goes to putting equipment in there for those children that need it. So, but the legislative session ends January seventeenth, I believe. And so, a, I mean, so if if we have it by then, with the mo the monies for that wouldn't be distributed till July first. But if we know it's coming, then we know that we can. And we'll work some type of creativity and magic within it. So, okay. Mr. Chair. All right. Um, any more comments? Public participation. Public participation. <laughs> Come on! I wanted to get Susie Walter to stand up. Oh. You want me to talk, Barry? Sure. No, Mama. No. <laughs> Hi, guys. I, just, I did have one little comment to make. I have had a lot of people contacting me from out of state that are so excited about this inclusive park being built that they're planning their vacations around when it's finished. So <laughs> we want it to be great. Yes. Yes. We can put the rocket out there. <laughs> Watch the wind shear. <laughs> wind shear out there might be a problem, Janine. No, but you can make a little track around it so they can drive a little brain in you. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Mama. I'll see you in a minute. We need some All chicken right. stuff. Yep. Right. Bye, okay. guys. Right. Anybody else online want to speak up? Rita, Judy, Miss Baker. <laughs> Great having y'all watch. That, that was okay. Though. Well, um, I will make the our next meeting will be February twenty third. Yes, sir. At four thirty in this in this room, and other than that, we're adjourned. Actually, we're. I don't want to give you a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>